Oh, hello. You found me inside the house for once. I'm checking out our caterpillars. We've actually, I, well, it's really, my wife and daughter have been raising caterpillars while we've been here at home. And it's kind of weird because we all know a little bit about caterpillars, but maybe you don't know this. Did you know that when a caterpillar is in a chrysalis like it is right now, it actually liquefies inside there. Like it turns into caterpillar goo all so it could turn into a butterfly later. But still, the fact that it's like liquidy in there, that's really kind of gross. And I've been wondering, would a caterpillar still go through that if it knew that's what it was gonna have to do? And come to think of it, would we take the plus sides of what's been happening to us the last couple months if we knew the downsides too? Like. I've really enjoyed being able to be on my bike and get out and run in beautiful weather the last two months, but would I want to do it if I knew that I couldn't leave my zip code for like eight weeks? I don't know. We're talking about change here, obviously. And the weird thing about change is that two people can look at the same change and see it two different ways. I've had conversations with some of you about school and some of you are so excited that you're not in school and some of you really miss school or at least the friends you see at school. Either way, we can look at the same thing and see it differently. But here's what we all have in common. Everybody's life is subject to change. Now, that's the name of our series, but it comes from maybe the, the terms of use or the end user licensing agreement or just those things that like when we install a new app or go to a web page that says we have to agree to them, we don't really look at them. But sometimes you look at them and it says subject to change, meaning that there's a thing we're agreeing to, but it could change at any time. So... Change. Here's three things I know about change. The first is that change forces us into the unknown. So it forces us into the unknown. And here's the thing about the unknown is that we don't have the whole picture. So it's tough to have the right perspective on whatever is changing because you don't know everything. And the third thing is change makes us come to grips with the facts that we are not in control. And control is a big deal for all of us because, you know, there's some stuff in life that's within our control. And some of that is without and we tend to hang and cling really tightly to the stuff that we can control. But if you have lack of complete control in your life, that means you are subject to change. And kind of like caterpillars, we don't really have a choice. So the question is, is not, how do we avoid change? I think the question has to be, how do we handle change well? So I think there's wisdom out there to help us do that. And one of the things that I've been looking at is the book of Hebrews, which is a book in the Old Testament. Nope, it's not. It's in the New Testament. And anyways, this letter is anonymous. We don't know who wrote it, but it became part of the letters that were copied and circulated around the early church, and it just stayed and stuck around until people put them all together and created the Bible. Now, the 13th chapter is the last chapter in the letter of the Hebrews, and it's kind of like a random to-do list. It's talking about loving other people, about visiting people in prison. It talks about having hope because God is not going to leave us. God is never going to let us be on our own. Verse 7, verses 1 through 6 are pretty random, right? And then we get to verse 8. And verse 8 says something pretty incredible. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. Now, Again, this seems just like this random list and like the author is running out of time. Like I gotta, you know, only have this much paper left or only have to wrap this up in 10 minutes and it's just like firing off every idea. But I think there is something intentional about putting this idea of Jesus Christ being the same yesterday and today and tomorrow all together with all this other random stuff that we're supposed to be doing. Now the original audience of this letter was a group of Christians. And this was at a time when it was hard to be a Christian, where Christians were persecuted. They were facing major change, and a lot of that change wasn't good. And just like everybody, when we face change that we don't like, we start to think, what did I do to deserve this? Or we start to ask, did I make God mad? Did I do something or say something or think something that made God upset? But the Hebrews author is telling us that no, it's, it's not us. How God feels about you and me, it doesn't change because God doesn't change. Now, our temptation is to think that God changes because we see everything around us changing. But the truth is that circumstances change, but God stays the same. That means that we are still loved, that we are still children of God, that we're still forgiven. Now, you and I don't have complete control, so things change. But God is in total control. 
God is omnipotent, which means that God knows everything. No, that's omniscient. Omnipotent means that you can do anything. Omnipotent. God, is, God knows everything and can do everything. Let's just leave it at that. But the bottom line is this. Life changes, God doesn't. And that's a relief because even in the midst of everything changing around me, I can count on God staying the same and not changing. The way that God feels about me, the way God sees me, it's still the same. It's all the same. Now, I think there's two ways that we can live this out. The first thing we can do is to focus on the who who doesn't change. Now, Hebrew says that we are never left, we're never forsaken, that God is our helper. That's an important thing. And there's a lot more about God, that we are always loved by God. No matter what we do or don't do, God loves us. That we are children of God, no matter what. We don't earn that, we're just given that title, or we're given that relationship. And it's an amazing thing. So the who, who doesn't change, what do you need to do to remind yourself of that? If you're struggling right now, and we all are struggling in some ways, how can you remind yourself that God doesn't change? And the way God feels about you and thinks about you and sees you, that doesn't change. Maybe you find a song that reminds you of that. Maybe you write a note, write a favorite Bible verse down and put it somewhere you're going to see it to remind you of that. Maybe you ask a friend or a parent or a brother or sister or a small group leader to text you daily to remind you. Just ask, how are you doing with that? That could be one way. So there's the who who doesn't change, but then there's the do that doesn't change. Because, because God doesn't change, the commands don't change. Jesus said the most important thing is to love God, to love your neighbor as yourself. That was true 2,000 years ago, and it's still true today. When you look at the beginning of chapter 13 of Hebrews, it's all about loving other people because God loved us. So, maybe for you, you're solid on the fact that God doesn't change. So maybe for you, you need to do the things that God has asked us to do that don't change. Now, let's be real, is that loving people outside of whoever you're stuck with is going to take some creativity. But God gave you what you need to do that. So just love others out of the love that God has for you and see them as people that God has put you there to love. And that hasn't changed. Now, I wish I could say that the changes coming to us are over, but they're not. And the truth is, they never will be. Even when this quarantine and coronavirus is over, things are still going to change. And maybe you identify with these caterpillars where you feel like you've turned to liquid inside and you don't know what to do. That's okay. That's totally normal. And what we've been talking about today, this way of focusing ourselves on the fact that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow, there's going to be days where we do great at remembering that and living that out and believing what we believe about God and, and doing what we need to do to live out our call from God. But there's also going to be days that you're going to struggle. I know I've struggled some days really bad with just trying to be a decent human being who can talk and say nice words. Why? It's because we're all human. And this is okay because this is a part of the process. You and I are also in a process of metamorphosis. It's not as obvious as a caterpillar, but there's the you that you were and there's the you that you are becoming. Some people call that your best self. I like to think of it as the God-filled self. That God wants me to look more like Jesus, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and to be like God. Not be God, but to be more like God. And that's coming. That's, what we're hap that's what's happening. This is just the chrysalis. And it's going to be messy. It's going to be slow. It's going to be gross. It's going to feel like nothing's happening. Or at least nothing good is happening. But you are meant to change. You weren't just meant to be you and be constant your whole life. You were meant to grow and to change. And change is one of the ways that you will change. And God will bring good from that change when we stay focused on the fact that God doesn't change. So, thanks for listening to me. I'm going to keep watching these chrysalis. You never know. I'm going to have a butterfly soon. <laughs>